All right, welcome everyone. Um, we're so happy to have you here attending the Indiana Arts Homecoming this year. Um, this is our final session, second day. Um, and we are here with Iris Williamson. Um, and she is joining us from the new Harmony Gallery of Contemporary Art at the University of Southern Indiana. And she's going to talk to us about building a new art world, alternative and artist run spaces. We're excited to have her. And, um, um, but before we let her get started, just a few um, things to remember, which is to keep yourself muted during the presentation. Um, if you have any questions, just throw them in the chat um, and we'll get to them um, at the end. Um, if you need um, closed captioning, um, just click the closed captioning um, button at the bottom of the navigation bar. Um, if you need to rename yourself, just hover over your picture, click the three dots, and then you'll be given that option. Um, and then if you have any questions or um, have any tech issues, just um, reach out to me in the chat. I'm happy to help you. Um, but without further ado, we will let Iris get started. Thank you, Iris. Okay, okay I am sharing my screen here. Can it... Okay, can everyone see this all right? Full screen, no side notes or anything? Okay, hopefully it's all right. All right, hello everyone. Um, welcome to this presentation titled Building a New Art World, Alternative and Artist-Run Spaces. Um, my name is Iris Williamson and I wanna begin by stating that I'm speaking to you from the unceded lands of the Kickapoo, Kaskaskia, Osage, Shawnee, Miami and Quapaw peoples, and that is um, New Harmony, Indiana. Um, I direct and curate the New Harmony Gallery of Contemporary Art at the University of Southern Indiana, a gallery that was inspired by two utopian experiments that founded the town in the 1800s. Um, philanthropist Jane Blaffer Owen with founding director John Bagley were, in a way, also inspired by the spirit of artists from spaces when they created the space in 1975. In addition to this position, um, I, with my collaborators, Tiffany Harker and Karen Sue, um, run an alternative space in Portland, Oregon called Wolving Contemporary. And um, I actually have run several artist run or alternative spaces in my career um, and have had positions in commercial galleries and arts nonprofits in Florida, North Carolina, New York, Oregon, and now here in Indiana. Um, these are a few snippets of some of those projects. So alternative and artist-run spaces have been a platform for possibility for me, as they have for many for decades around the world. Um, as we continue to move through COVID and address structures of power within society, um, the rules around the art world have changed. Learning from past projects, I'm wondering, can alternative and artist-run spaces continue to be flat? platforms for the creation and critique of new art practices. In this presentation, I'm going to start by defining artists run in alternative spaces, and then I'm going to go through a few historical examples. I'll share some more recent examples of spaces like storefronts, warehouses, and garages, and then share some examples of how artist books, art fairs, and weird spaces can also be considered artist run or alternative spaces. Um, after sharing a little bit about my most recent alternative gallery space, I'd like to revisit this question, thinking about possibilities of future artists run and alternative spaces here in Indiana. Though there have been some, I see Indiana as a place of possibility, a place where artists can create the opportunities that they want to exist. I mean, it might not, there might not be a ton of funding or, you know, there's always challenges, but there is a ton of space. And I hope that you're encouraged and empowered to create new spaces and experiments. And also this conversation isn't meant to, to be exhaustive. Um, I'm sure many of you have examples of other spaces that have presented interesting work, experiments and supported different communities. Um, I hope you see this conversation as a jumping off point to create projects and spaces yourself. So to start with, what is an artist run or alternative space? So honestly, I use 
the terms interchangeably, but um, generally an alternative exhibition space um, is a space that's other than a traditional commercial venue used for the public exhibition of artwork, um, often comprising a space converted from another use, such as a storefront, warehouse, or factory loft. It is then made into a display or performance space um, for use by individual or groups of artists. Um, an artist run space is essentially the same thing, but run by an artist or a group of artists. So um, both terms seem to circumvent the structures of public art centers, museums, or commercial galleries and allow for a more experimental program. Um, I like this definition from the Institute of Applied Aesthetics. Um, artist run spaces fit all kinds of models. They are testing grounds and springboards to the commercial art world, intimate gatherings and apartments, and places for reading groups and shared meals. There are little pockets of activity that serve particular audiences at partic particular times, filling gaps and holes for all that the art world fails to provide. Sometimes they're meant to be temporary and other times they can grow to become professionalized institutions that a later generation of artists can define themselves against. Um, I also like how David Robbins describes these spaces as ventures that explored the ideas that the spatialized real estate known as the A gallery isn't just a place for hanging pictures, but is rather a context with that context definition conforming to whatever happens to be introduced to it. So they're both experimental art projects in spaces. They can be short lived due to financial precarity, which is totally okay and part of the cycle of spaces. But sometimes these spaces will shift and stabilize into nonprofits or commercial galleries. Um, the history of artists run and alternative spaces can go way back. In theory, it could just be an artist studio. Um, in the late 1800s, early 1900s, there were many experimental projects with spaces and exhibitions, um, which helped pave the way for alternative spaces. Some early project examples include um, the 1963 Salon des Refusés in Paris. Um, this exhibition included works that were rejected from the Paris Salon, um, critiquing the establishment of that time. Most notably, Manet's The Luncheon on the Grass exhibited there, which stirred up a lot of controversy at the time. Um, First Papers of Surrealism um, was an exhibition organized by Andre Breton in 1942 in New York. Um, artist Marcel Duchamp, Duchamp installed the exhibition with a web of twine that stretched across the exhibition space. The barrier that Duchamp created um, confronted the physicality of viewing art and the idea of how you have access to artworks and navigate space. But then jumping ahead, um, uh, artists run an alternative spaces arguably uh, had their heyday starting in the 1960s and 70s due to the National Endowment for the Arts interests in financially supporting experimental projects and spaces during that time. Many of these spaces featured artists who were overlooked and excluded from mainstream galleries. Franklin Furness was one example, and it was founded on Franklin Street in 1976 by artist Martha Wilson. Franklin Furness started as a bookstore featuring artists' books. It then expanded to include readings, performances, and exhibitions. Franklin Furness and many other spaces in the US either shifted or closed in the 1980s when controversy arose from spaces using NEA funding to present art, artworks um, that government officials considered to be offensive. Um, you might know this as the culture wars of the 80s um, and most notably at the center of this was photography from Robert Maplethorpe and the Piss Christ piece from Andreas Serrano. Um, Franklin Furness adapted to those challenges that they faced by um, shifting out of this space and then becoming a forerun forerunner for presenting online art performances, which started like as early in the as in the 90s. Um, and then getting a little closer to home here, um, while the Hyde Park Art Center in Chicago was technically founded in 1939, it had the experimental energy of an artist run space with artist and curator Don Baum at the helm. Baum began exhibiting a group of innovative emerging artists who became known as the Chicago Images. And there's an excellent show of uh, a collection of works from this time period at Newfields in Indianapolis right now. So if you haven't seen it, I'd recommend checking it out. Um, in 1972, 
20 artists co-founded Air Gallery in New York City as an exhibition space that supports an open exchange of ideas and risk-taking by women artists in order to provide support and visibility. AIR operates with a self-directed governing body and an organization, the organization is alternative to mainstream institutions and thrives on a network of active participants. They continue to operate in Brooklyn, presenting exhibitions, events, lectures, and more. And similarly, the Women's Building in Los Angeles is a cornerstone in late 20th century lesbian and feminist culture. The space was created by and for women and exemplified the impulse among feminists, including lesbians and bisexual women, to establish autonomous spaces outside of the traditional patriarchal institutions. Artist Suzanne Lacey is quoted saying that founders Judy Chicago and Sheila de Bretville and Arlene Raven felt that they had gone as far as they could go in institutions. They were interested in creating their own women's culture hub. Um, let's see. In 1971, Gordon Matta Clark, Carol Godin, and Tina Giraud co-founded Food, an artist-run space as restaurant in Manhattan's Soho neighborhood, um, and it was managed and staffed by artists. Um, while Food was a functioning restaurant, it also became an, a hub for artists and served as a testing ground for some of Matta Clark's building cuts, of which he is now uh, really well known for. Um, Artists run an alternative space has sprung up all around the world. Um, Canada had many, including Western Front, and it was founded as a live work alternative space dedicated to non-object, non-objective art practices, including performance, poetry, video, dance, and all manner of interdisciplinary experimentation. The space was originally collectively run, but now it's uh, run more like a traditional nonprofit. So those are some historical examples there. Well, there are many other great examples of historical artists run and alternative spaces. I'd like to note some of the more recent projects that's of interest to me um, and the impact that they've had. So I'll start with one close to home that you should mostly, many of you should be familiar with. Um, uh, this is Indianapolis's Big Car Collaborative. Um, what started as a small group of artists, writers, designers, and musicians renting a st tiny studio in the Fountain Square neighborhood um, became a large nonprofit cultural organization that presents multifaceted exhibitions, public programs, and community support here in Indiana. Um, in the 1990s, Michelle Grabner and Bel Brad Killam um, founded The Suburban in their garage in the suburb of Chicago, and then later it moved to Milwaukee. They were interested in this idea of space outside of traditional art hubs, and specifically in the suburb. Um, writer David Robbins states, an avant-garde gallery in a suburban garage in the Midwest, it kind of felt like a natural development. In fact, since art is fond of money and the suburbs have money, it's curious that there aren't already a lot of artists run avant-garde galleries scattered throughout America's countless suburban communities, but there aren't. Artist and curator Modu Diang founded Work Sound International in a warehouse in Southeast Portland in, in 2006. Um, Work Sound served as a hub for a dynamic and diverse community of cultural producers, presenting over 50 exhibitions, providing practice space for bands, as well as an office for a record label, um, involving 1,200 artists, musicians, filmmakers, and poets. Um, so in addition to supporting artists of the region, Diang also had a spe specific vision to providing audiences with new art from outside the area. And that would provide opportunities for local artists to expand their networks. Um, Good Weather was created in artist and designer Haynes Riley's parents' garage in Little Rock, Arkansas, um, bringing in interesting artists from all over like this installation by Sandra Perry. Um, the whole family contributes to this project. Um, in addition to the garage in Little Rock, Haynes has taken this project to do fairs, exhibitions, and projects inter internationally. Um, and now he has a gallery as well in Chicago. Um, New York-based housing um, started as an institutional critique in relation to the art market and the current value of Black art. Originally 
Founded by KJ Freeman and Aileen Skyers, Housing Presents supports and sells work by emerging black and brown artists. Housing reflects on the many uh, different states of blackness, including housing and gentrification, the lack of black gallerists, directors and dealers, and many impacts of power and inequality within the art market. And while many artists run in alternative spaces are situated in warehouses, houses, storefronts, garages, there are many uh, different ways to think about what a space is or spaces as platforms for art making. Um, starting in the early 60s, many artists began to explore the possibilities of the book form as an artistic medium. Um, spaces like Franklin Furnace use the artist's book as a platform for presenting work. Um, Printed Matter, an artist-run space founded in 1976, states that unlike the art book, catalog, or monograph that tend to showcase artworks created in another medium, the term artist books refers to publications that have been conceived as artworks in their own right. These projects for the page are generally inexpensive, often produced in large or open editions, and are democratically available. The book is a medium that allows an artist's work to be accessible to a multitude of people in different locations at any given time. And today, artist books are widely used by artists as a platform for, for presenting art and ideas. Artist book fairs, including, including Printed Matters book fairs in New York City and LA each year, presents artist books by independent publishers, print studios, individual artists, designers, photographers, as well as rare and archival books um, each year. Which leads me um, into mentioning that other systems of the art world can be artist run or alternative spaces as well. KJ Freeman of Housing noted, with spaces as some sort of institutional critique in reaction to the art market, it makes sense that artists would come up with alternative ways to operate within the art world. Some of these include art fairs. For example, the Milwaukee International Art Fair was held and founded by just some local artists. Um, and it was held at the Polish Falcons Beer Hall. And it featured both local spaces, dealers and artists, as well as international galleries. As the press release said, art will be for sale and a fine selection of locally produced beers will be on tap. Um, Utopian Visions Art Fair was an alternative art fair that provides a platform for artists, gallerists, and curators to present projects that work towards possible alternative futures. A selection of artist-run spaces, artist collaboratives, and individual artists presented works together with a view of the future. Um, the Martin Luther King Jr. School Museum of Contemporary Art, or KS MOCA, is a contemporary art museum and social practice art project inside and in partnership with the Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. School, a pre-K through fifth grade public school in Northeast Portland, Oregon. In 2017 and 2018, KS MOCA presented an art fair restructured in a school context with kid-sized booths, student curators, docents, and artists alongside renowned local gallerists and artists, as well as national and internationally known uh, artists and galleries. Other Places LA is a website that features photos of contemporary art ex exhibitions and projects in sheds, garages, apartments, streets, flagpoles, and any other place. Um, OPATH, or Other Places Art Fair, features participants presenting site-specific booths encapsulating their alternative or artist-run projects or, and programming. OPATH provides an alternative art fair structure designed specifically to support the growing movement of hard to define art spaces and unconventional projects. And so you can see these kinds of projects are not in a traditional gallery booth, but outside site specific in, in unusual spaces. So here's a few more of uh, spaces. Um, we could use OPATH as a resource to find out about a bunch of other interesting spaces on the West Coast. There are a lot of resources, archives, and networks of spaces and projects worldwide. Um, honestly, there's so many artists run in alternative spaces, I can't even scratch the surface in a presentation like this, but here are a few more that come to mind for me. 
when I think about interesting projects in unusual spaces. So um, Chicken Coop Contemporary is a gallery located in a barn with a chicken coop on the outs outskirts of Southeast Portland. Artist Srijan Chowhoudi runs the space and it's a little out in the country and it's very a, a peaceful space to go. Um, Elevator Mondays was a social exhibition space built inside a decommissioned four by six foot freight elevator in a shared studio building in Los Angeles. Um, quoting from artist Don Edler, the intimate scale and discrete location of the space allows for a more personal conversational experience, experience for both the viewers and the artists. The Bronco Gallery was a small gallery based out of a 1991 Ford Bronco. The artists wanted the gallery, um, wanted to start the gallery um, to give an emerg emerging artist a platform, but they didn't have a building, but they did have an SUV. So here is an um, exhibition from 2015 with artist Tatiana Ostapenko um, and they're tailgating at the Portland International Railway. Um, Albatross Gallery, the gallery consisting of a three by four inch plastic sleeve on a black lanyard. Um, artist Michael Renich wears the gallery, the gallery every day during the duration of an exhibition and at art openings such as the first Thursday in, in Oregon. Um, the John Rippenhoff experience is a wooden box attached to a wall about um, eight or nine feet off the ground. Climbing up a step ladder, oh, uh, one at a time, viewers can put their heads inside the box and see some very small art. Um, the experience has been installed in various locations around the country and in Rippenhoff's words, solves the persistent problem of artists having big ideas, but scant resources with which to realize them. And of course, if you can't find a space, you can always do projects online. Um, Couple examples. Um, the jogging was a Tumblr page from 2009 to 2014 by Brad Trammell and Lauren Christensen. It featured a lot of strange Photoshopped images, and this was before memes were so ubiquitous. And then independent curator and artist Hilda Lynn Hipfenstein um, started making memes about the art market under the name Jerry Gagosian. She is in uses Instagram as a platform for critiquing the extreme wealth, privilege, and posturing of the art world. Um, incorporating a lot of humor. Um, Jerry Gagosian's Hilda was recently asked the question by the observer, can the art world be fixed? I think about that a lot when considering the structures of the art world and the challenges that artists and arts communities face. And so often it comes down to funding and resources and the power structures at the top. I love how Hilda responded. I think the better question is, can art fix the world? Art is a lens through which someone can approach their entire life. It enables a mindset for incredible freedom, creativity, and dare I say, magic. So that brings me to um, this gallery here. Um, all of this is why I love artists run spaces and alternative spaces so much. I started my most recent gallery in early 2017. I was feeling that feeling, how can art make a difference? Is anyone listening to artists? Does it even matter? Just like my early projects the, and the projects of so many other artists, um, these spaces are all birthed out of a need in a community. In 2017, my collaborators um, needed to do something that supported, uh, my, um, that supported artists challenged systems and also supported itself. Um, I was gifted a space in Portland and felt the weight of responsibility to create something meaningful. So I started looking at the frustrating parts of the art market itself. Um, specifically, we developed an alternative gallery model that was inspired by not galleries, not nonprofits, but by the beast itself, corporations. We adopted the language and posturing of corporations and capitalism to do something that was the opposite, to build community, to share power, and to embrace transparency, um, while also paying the bills. We created the Holding Contemporary Founding Shareholder Program as an investment into the foundation of the project, 
which would allow for us more freedom to present and support artists and their ideas. Our initial IPO of 300 shares has been selling to investors for over 100 or for for hundred dollars each share over the course of the gallery's existence. Um, we're nearing our five-year mark, and we have about 40 shares still available. And mind you, our shareholders are not necessarily the wealthy business people we know. They're mostly people who actually love and commit themselves to a life of art. They're artists, students, professors, curators, the art curious friends, et cetera, from all over the world. Um, essentially a representation of our actual community. It's not just about one place, but about the many aspects of our community um, and how that community reaches across barriers. I love that a hundred dollar share can be, to be a founding shareholder can be more accessible and fun and it can build community around it. Um, the shareholders receive actual shareholder benefits, which are voting rights, invites to special events and quarterly packets that include financial statements. As you can see here, um, information about the artists we've been presenting, artist ephemera and printed material and actual dividend checks based on how much we make in sales during that quarter. And while we still front as a commercial gallery and we do support artists somewhat through sales, the shareholder program gave us a space to reflect back on the system that we are in and how art can be a vehicle of change in our communities. Part of this includes regular, regularly handing over the space to others, including regular partnerships with this organization here, Don't Shoot Portland, as you can see. And this is what makes it worthwhile. Um, we love that we get to do projects like this. So that's my example, but holding still has a ton of challenges and it participates in ways in the system that it is also trying to critique um, in spite of the things that I do think actually do work well with the project. Um, but it's a process that keeps moving forward and we use art and spaces to imagine new worlds. Um, I hope to do this in, a thought, in thoughtful and meaningful ways now that I'm in this role in New Harmony. I've been here for about seven months um, and this town itself was built on um, imagining new worlds. Um, COVID-19 and uh, protests around racial justice have made increasingly visible the systems of inequality in our society. And art itself is a tricky paradox. It reinforces systems of power and extreme wealth, embracing exclusivity. Yet at the same time, it also is a process of breaking down systems, imagining new possibilities and facilitating healing. And it is the most inclusive thing. Anyone can make art. And because of the possibility of art, I believe it still is the best tool to build a better art, to build better art worlds here in Indiana and beyond. And hopefully these examples of platforms can inspire ways of creating platforms around art making in your area. These are my biography of notes, and then that's it. I'm would like to open it up for questions if any any other thoughts or ideas um hopefully it kind of gets this presentation gets wheels turning about needs and possibilities in your community that's it iris thank you so much that is so interesting um, I really, I really, um, I love the artist, these alternative spaces that have turned into like conceptual art pieces in themselves. I think that's very interesting. Um, and um, um, yeah, if anyone has any, any questions, it looks like just from the chat that we have a, a few people that are trying to figure out how to use um, space that they already have in a different way. Um, or are creating alternative spaces um, or just beginning that journey. Um, so, you know, I, I would love to open it up just to have, have those people, you know, we could just have a dialogue if you'd like to. Um, sure, yeah. it, doesn't, it doesn't have to be stuffy or, you know. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's kind of the idea. I was like, obviously sharing a ton of information. So I felt like I was like, okay, here's, here's the stuff I wanted to make sure that we have some things and examples to look at, but 
so many people have different, there's so many different possibilities. And I'm sure so many of you have examples and things to share of just interesting anecdotes and projects that you've seen or different ideas that you have or different challenges that you have that is, um, you know, it's all specific, but I think that there's lots of poss possibilities when we think about artist run spaces. So. Um, Definitely, um, we have a couple of questions here. Um, um, Angelita would like you to talk more about artist books. If you yeah. have any more info about that. I loved the way that um, in my research, going back to Franklin Furness and going to um, uh, printed matter of thinking about like, you know, if you're, you're an artist and you're thinking about who has access to your artworks, you can think about like, okay, well, who's going to go to a museum or who's going to go to a gallery? There's, there's certain points of access in that way. And I really like thinking the way that artist books can be a, a different approach towards distributing an artwork or an ideas rather than having to like, or even having to like purchase artworks. So, so much of like owning a piece of art is inaccessible as well, but a book could be inexpensive or, you know, it could be even like distributed free. I mean, you think about zines, you think about different ways of like distributing information that are just, you know, people kind of create these things and, uh, you know, distribute them in their own ways. So I liked thinking about space as in an artist book can also be a space. Um, there's beautiful collections, so many like, you know, significant artists have used the artist book in their projects. Um, I worked on a, I supported uh, an exhibition that was, was all about a collection of um, artist books. And I think there's something about like holding something in your hand and that kind of intimacy and relating to an artwork in that way. And so I think it's just kind of a cool uh, platform. I mean, obviously there's so many different ways to, to do these kinds of projects and it just depends on what you care about and what you want. And um, I think that that's a great way. I mean, you could do things that are handmade. You could go down to Kinko's and, you know, photocopy things. You could, you know, print things out on your com computer. They could be, it could be handmade with handmade papers or beautiful inks or, you know, watercolors or, you know, there's so many different types of, of uh, artist books that are really fun to see. So hopefully that's, some good information. If you have any other specific yeah. questions, let me know about that. Yeah, I think those are great. I mean, just like like you were saying, how can we, how can art fix the world? Well, it, you know, you, you're changing a mindset <laughs> just yeah. by calling, by, you know, taking what we know as a book and, and kind of flipping it around. It's very, it's very interesting, but, um, mm -hmm. But to continue, um, uh, Miss Chris has a question about, can you talk more about holding and how you got the community involved? I think it was one step at a time. I really, I feel like a lot of, um, I, as you could, as I said earlier, I've lived in um, different cities and, and kind of each time I go and enter into a new place, there's really, um, something special and something unique about each place where you're in. And there's a community that is sharing physical space with you. But I also uh, like thinking about how one's community involves people who aren't in that physical space um, currently. And I think really COVID made that hit home for me as well. And so when I was, um, you know, just talking to different people about the artist project and thinking about this shareholder model, there's a lot of individual conversations with people and they're mostly just started with people that I knew or people that I had access to. Um, but it was kind of interesting how I would end up talking to people from places I'd lived before. And I like that idea of like my community involves those people who invested in me or I invested in them or we were part of community in years gone by. And so kind of just like you know, being that we're all talking from different parts of mostly different parts of Indiana and able to share and talk about ideas, just thinking about how we're connected beyond our physical space, while our physical space is super important too. So I would say like, you know, 
getting to know people in the community, doing different exhibitions, bringing in different people, showing up at other people's projects, really like, you know, I think so much of, of building art community or getting to know artists, getting to know art makers, getting to know different organizations or different projects. It's all about like showing up. And so I think so much of that just happens one step at a time, telling people, being interested in different projects, listening to their projects and supporting other people's projects as well. So I think that there's kind of like a, an ecology to that. It's like you can support your friends, you can support things that are interesting, but through that, you know, those are the people that support you as well. And so I really like that that energy and how it grows over time. So we've, we've been, um, that gallery is almost at five years and uh, we have, there's like 300 shares. We only have like 40 something shares left. So that means um, some people bought more than one chair, but um, you know, we have people from all around the world. We have somebody in Berlin and somebody in Paris. And these are just people that we knew who moved over there. So it's not like, there's not that personal connection. It's just like people are living their lives. And when you leave a place, maybe it feels like you're going away, but they're all still part of your, your story. So I don't know, I kind of like that. The consistency and the newness and how it just kind of limits some of the barriers of, of location. So my encouragement to you all is to think about the the things that you want to exist. Like earlier, so much of so many of these projects just come out of um, like seeing something that needs to happen. Like for me, in doing this presentation, I'm thinking a lot about USI students and coming into this town and being like, "Y'all are awesome! Like you're doing all these things. You don't have to wait for a gallerist or." somebody to come in and be like, oh, this is, this is, I've discovered you or something like that. Like so often artists become, they grow in their career and they get opportunities because you can create the things that you want to exist. And I think that that's essentially how it worked for me as well. Like I'm able to do the projects that I dreamed of or the, 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 be involved with things that I love because of coming up with creative solutions which happen through this kind of platform. So for me, that's what I'm like, oh, the students should totally like get rent, go rent a U-Haul and park it out in front of some event and then exhibit all their arts, art like inside the U-Haul, something like that, you know? So. Yeah, I love it. <clears throat> Um, do you do you feel that um, we're we're just within holding? Um, you know, you're you're um, you're meeting the needs of your community, and um, do you see different ways for the community than outside of that to begin creating solutions? Does that make sense? Could you? rephrase <laughs> <laughs> I guess you know yeah it's like you're, you're involving the community and and meeting needs mm -hmm. do you feel like it changes the people out, outside of the people in, involved in the artist run spaces I guess that's what I'm saying do you feel like there's bigger change happening because of that I think it's hard to really quantify like exactly yeah. what I'm actually doing because I also am like there's so many people doing amazing work I care about contributing and, and offering the resources that I have um, towards you know improving or like making my making the world a better place as I can but it also realistically like that's a tall order and I don't really know how much it actually works but um I think that it's I know for the idea of like having a shareholder program where it's like, it's more accessible than maybe some other programs would be. 
is a good step, but it still kind of runs on that factor of, of inaccessibility. Like why $100 might be a lot more accessible for many people, it's still inaccessible for lots of people. So I'm not like solving the, the problems, you know, there's still a lot of problems in it. And um, I think that's just part of moving through and experimentation and, and challenging even my challenging ourselves more. But um, I find that there are certain projects like the idea of handing over space or thinking about audiences is really interesting. Like I work within a contemporary art context in, in you know, those many different um, facets, but um, I thought it was really interesting with having that space to be able to hand it over, hand over the keys and let other um, programs and projects and community groups do something in that space. And there's a balance to it. We can't do it all the time. And then we also like, you know, it's, there, it's all comes down to like balancing funding and resources and all those things, but to have more of a, more flexibility and to be able to really confront um, aesthetics and confront standards of the art world and the, the structures around it. Um, it's really, I think that that breaks down a lot of barriers and that makes, uh, makes us able to connect and build relationships with people who might not necessarily be like con contemporary art world people. And I think that's way more important than just staying within our little bubble. So, um, so yeah, I think that if that answers your question, I, I think that's kind of like, I really like moving and shifting ar around with who we're talking to and how we connect and who we learn from. And so I think that's part of it. Um, I see another question here, which I think is really interesting. Are there ways that your institutional affiliations limit you or the possibilities of the work you do with and for artists? What are some strategies you've adopted that help you to face or neutralize those limits? I think that I can answer that in two different ways. Um, I think that right now it's a unique experience. Like I have um, an institutional connection being here in New Harmony. It seems, uh, it's interesting because New Harmony, this gallery here, I, I keep being told like the reason that I'm brought in is to be able to take advantage of the people and the networks that I have. And so thus far, USI has really enjoyed and like it's been a really good, um, you just kind of build on your knowledge. Um, but um, I think that the difference for holding is that first of all, I don't get, I don't make any money from that. Like that's a, that's a project and a, a project that I, I volunteer myself for, I give myself for it and then I have collaborators and partners that um, do that as well. So I think that if I was making money from that, maybe it would be a little bit more complicated, but um, because I'm not, it's just a project to support artists. Um, it can kind of work out, but um, I think that, so that's, that's kind of my answer from one point of perspective, but the other perspective is um, that, when I work, I'm kind of working a lot with commercial artists and um, like that balance between commercial artists who are represented by other commercial galleries in Portland. Like I can't really work with a lot of those artists because it looks like we're having solo exhibitions. It looks like we are a commercial gallery even though we're not. And so there's kind of like, um, like, those artists only show with the galleries that they show with. So we might have good friendships and support them and do other things, but we don't show them. We are able to show more artists that work with larger, like work more in institutions, maybe work like more with sculpture or installation or do the kinds of projects that wouldn't necessarily be in a commercial gallery because of the shareholder program. So we kind of operate more like a nonprofit, even though we are in like kind of we have this little 
like we kind of look sometimes like a commercial gallery. So we're kind of in between. And so, um, yeah, so limiting the possibilities. There's lots of limitations no matter what, I think. And I think the structures and the institutions, it's kind of learning how to care and respect for the relationships that you have and how to honor them. And each institution has its own like structure and how to do that. Um, I've been kind of, yeah, I think a lot of it is just, I think a lot of things are changing in the art world. And so I'm curious to see if that continues to as well. Like a lot of the rules that I feel like would have been the case before seem to be a, a lot more in the style of like, we're, we're making the worlds we want to see. So um, yeah, I don't know if that answers, <laughs> I guess, thanks. Anything else? I have my email on, um, oh, I stopped sharing my screen, but um, y'all are welcome to reach out to me if y'all have, if there's anything specific that I can help support or, um, you know, talk about projects, talk about possibilities. A lot of these things just take like specifically thinking about the context that you're in and the resources that you have and then seeing what you'd like to have exist and then coming up with possibilities. So there's always challenges, there's always limitations, but um, it really is so specific to each project. But anyways, I hope for, hopefully that, that you all can, um, it's a lot of getting outside of the box, thinking outside of the box of like what you can actually do. So. Well, thank you, Iris. Appreciate this information. It's so interesting. And um, yeah, I love thinking about, yeah, just expanding our, our ideas through space. It's great. Um, <laughs> so yeah, so um, yeah, if anyone would like to reach out to Iris, we'll be sending out some, um, oh yeah, um, can you share your screen with email or drop on um, the chat? Yeah, that'd be great. And then we'll um, the the Arts Commission will be sharing resources out at the end of the of the conference this year um, for all of our sessions. So um, keep an eye out for that. Um, and um, Iris, thank you for your time. Thank you for the information. Um, be keeping an eye on on what's going on down there in uh, Southern Indiana right. <laughs> and, and what you're accomplishing. So that's great. Um, so um, we do have. Um, one final session today um, it, um, for the artists on the call, there's an artist meetup. Um, if you'd like to just connect with other artists, um, discuss what you're going through, new ideas. Clearly, maybe some of you would you know, benefit from, from just having a chat. So um, please join us over there. And um, thanks again. Have a great day. <laughs> Yes, I'm still here. I can undo myself here. I <laughs> um, yeah, so I think that's that's what's difficult about like sometimes you have to show it to people. And that's what I think that is kind of starting to happen here where like I'm coming into a new position where I have this background of artist run spaces and this attitude of like, just have to make it happen kind of thing. Um, and I have to say, it's been very, it's a hard process of my different projects and spaces that I've done. I have in my twenties, I have like, before I started holding, I had a ton of debt from those things. So I didn't want to get back into debt. So it was all, there's a lot of like lessons learned, like the hard way kind of thing to, to go through this process, but I know that coming into you know this role at um, in New Harmony, I I have a certain kind of energy and a certain kind of experience that I have to think as of as an as an asset because if I don't, then it's um, 
you know, I, I, I know the, the typical pathway is like certain kind of education, certain kind of things, certain kind of way. And I have some of it, but it's also like, I have my own kind of like weird turns and twists in that, in that process. But um, I knew that I had to kind of like start presenting the kinds of things that I had seen or presenting the kinds of projects or facilitating like little conversations that I'd seen. And honestly, I think that this project, even just talking with you all here is a step, a little step towards just knowing that there are other ways of working that exist. Um, the expectations, if you're in an institution or if you have to kind of like navigate new projects within institutions, it's all a balance. You can't push too hard. You can't do things in, in too hard of a way and you're working within a system. So I think a lot is just understanding the what's important to that system and their, their real values. Like if they want, you know, certain kind of engagement, if they, if it's about fundraising in a certain way, if it's about visibility in a certain way, if you're going after those goals, then you can see how the new projects you want to introduce are helping to support those goals. And it might be kind of outside of the box, but if you can see a clear path to what they want, then it's easier to kind of initiate it. So I find, I'm finding that a little bit too. It's like, I'm working within an institution. I'm working within um, an art school that I've seen a lot of these things happen in other art schools because I've worked in different places around the country and I have lots of friends that have done cool things in different institutions. But I also know that the institutions are extremely challenging. Like art schools are really rough. Like there's lots of twists and turns and limitations and things, you know, every which way. So I think it's really kind of like trusting that they think that they believe that you have their goals in mind, mm -hmm. which is this, whatever their mission statement is, whatever that thing is and how to accomplish that. And sometimes it's like, if, it, if it's like, okay, giving permission or giving like money to be able to do something for yourself. Um, sometimes it's just using the resources that you know you have to create something a little bit different. It might just be like, kind of smaller twists and turns to um, open up more ideas. But yeah, it's so specific. I mean, it's so specific to your specific challenges, to your specific institutions and to what you want and where you want to go. So. Um, right. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I like your, um, you know, just you saying that it's sort of challenging <laughs> and difficult. You're going to, you're going to run into some limitations, um, some different ways of thinking. And I think just knowing that is helpful that, you know, everybody's sort of encountering that. I work for a public library. Mm -hmm. uh, we have an art and maker space. And, um, and that whole concept is kind of new to this library as well. So, um, you know, just trying to navigate through, you know, I have some ideas, but how is this serving the public? And, you know, that, you know, and I think it is, but I mean, you know, everybody has their ideas of how to best serve, right? The right. public. Um, so, um, you know, kind of looking at, our mission statement at the library and the goals that um, are set up, I do feel, you know, a lot of what I'm thinking about is going to support those. And I like, you know, you saying just try and connect the dots, basically. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. 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 And some things don't work. I was listening to another lecture before and I was like, you know, sometimes things need a lot of space and a lot of air to get to really kind of like lock in and some things don't work. And mm -hmm. I think, even with the idea that I had for holding, I was like, this is gonna be a lot of effort and energy if the idea doesn't make sense. And I don't know everything about like investing and like economics and all this stuff. So I'm not even like, I'm kind of like, uh, I'm learning in this process too. So mm -hmm. I, I talk to a lot of advisors. I, I kind of like do the throwing the spaghetti on the wall and like seeing what actually sticks. and some things I think will work and then they don't. 
or I need to like think it through. I have to get like think it through someone else's brain. Like they have to actually like I have to hear myself saying it out loud and then hear it repeated to see if it actually makes sense. So it's very much like I think that there's a balance between like kind of forcing something to happen with the resources that you have and like act, coming up with creative solutions to actually create projects that are interesting. But then also knowing that there's kind of a flow you get into and both there's like a balance to it all and like kind of some intuition about it. So as you're navigating that space and trying to introduce new ideas, maybe sometimes it's important to kind of like sit with something for a little while or really kind of create that that case for it through okay. it, getting advice from different people through like thinking through different scenarios thinking through resources i mean yeah it's kind of like i have to have a convincing argument for a lot of mine <laughs> and that takes right, right. yeah. yeah so it's tricky though i mean mm -hmm. and, and i think oh, power over what you can do or not right and I, I mean, I, I also think your point of it's not all going to work, which, of course, you know, we all know this, but it's, you know, putting yourself into that territory mm -hmm. of, OK, I'm putting my idea out on the line here. And, you know, I can do that pretty easily in my artwork. But when it comes to like I'm involving other people, <laughs> mm -hmm. you know, and uh, money that's not mine and, you know, all that stuff, it just like becomes more overwhelming yeah. but I, you know it it's something you have to go through right and sort yeah. of yeah which and is a being good a, like some there's also something powerful about failure like at the beginning of what i was talking about with like artist run spaces i was like most most of them fail like some of them last like six months some of them last like some of them just they just don't work lots of people are bad administrators or they can't like organize things or should yeah. artists even be administrators? Probably not, or that's not necessarily a requirement all the all the time. So it's um, I think that I think a lot of it is also holding your own ideas so tightly. And so to kind of allow it to it doesn't reflect who you are and what in and, and your value in an organization or as an artist or whatever you're you're doing. But if something's going to work to try to give it the, you know, you want to give it the energy to make it happen, but you also have to kind of listen to the thing. It's like, it's not, you have to hold it loosely. That's, that's kind of how I think about it. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of a self-preservation thing too. I'm like, I want to like, if it all goes wrong, because I'm always par I'm a paranoid person, so I feel like things are going to go wrong. But if, I, if I'm always so like, okay, each thing has to be this certain special, like it has to have this kind of result, then I would get nothing done because I would be <laughs> paralyzed. So. Thank you. Yep. Yeah. Thanks so much for sharing your, your, your challenges and your, your ideas about it. Well, I think that's it. Well, so much. We go? Yeah. <laughs> thanks so much, everybody. I feel like we just got started. We could talk talk for a while longer, but um, but hopefully, yeah, you can connect later. And um, um, I appreciate your time. And thanks everyone for joining in. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks.